Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing hemodynamic shear stress. Okay, so in the first video what I did was remind you of uh, the hemodynamic model uh, of the cardiovascular system, where we have two systems, the venous system and the arterial system, and we have a tube connecting them through which blood can flow from the arterial system to the venous system. Every second or so, the heart beats, and that moves a stroke volume's worth of blood from the venous reservoir to the arterial system. That is what maintains the difference between uh, the pressures of the arterial system and the venous system. And basically, at equilibrium, what will happen is the movement of blood from the venous system to the arterial system uh, will match uh, by the heart, each uh, heartbeat will match the movement of blood through the tube in the opposite direction, uh, which occurs between consecutive heartbeats. Okay, and that's the point at which you'll be at equilibrium. Before that, what will happen is you'll get uh, you'll get, get more movement from the venous side to the arterial side uh, than you will from the arterial side to the venous side, and that will mean that blood will build up in the arterial system, building up the pressure difference between these two, and that will gradually raise the flow of blood back through this tube until the point that you get into equilibrium, where the flow through this tube is equal to the uh, movement of blood via the heart. Okay, so what we're now going to talk about is hemodynamic shear stress. So we've discussed how we're going to have blood moving through this tube here. So that means we're going to have blood flowing past here. So let's look at that in more detail. If this is the wall of this blood vessel here, then what we have is we have blood flowing through that. Now what does blood contain? It will contain loads of little particles, so maybe some red blood cells here. Okay, so these are red blood cells. Now, basically, what you're going to get is if you've got um, particles flowing past you in this direction, then they're all going to bang against little molecules on the surface of the endothelial cells. So if we draw an endothelial cell here, then basically the endothelial cell will have lots of little molecules sort of sticking out like this. Loads of potentially little proteins that are in its uh, endothelium, okay? So it will have loads of little molecules um, uh, sticking out. And what you're going to do, basically, is you're going to rub these um, red blood cells against it as they move across, move along. And it's not just the red blood cells, it's all the other constituents of the blood as well, the water, for goodness sake. Everything is going to move across, and some of them are going to bang into the endothelial cell, basically. It's just like friction. That's all shear stress is, it's friction. When you, um, when, you know, when you've got a weight or something on the table and that m when you move it in a direction it f you feel a frictional force and it's the molecules of the weight interacting with the molecules of the table and producing a backwards force effectively. Shear stress is just that but in the case of the blood vessel this endothelial cell is the analog analogous, analogous in this here to this table here and the blood, the constituents of the blood, are analogous to the weight. The blood is moving along this blood vessel, and it will, the molecules within the blood will bang against the molecules that make up the endothelial cell, which is the wall of this blood vessel. This force um, that, the, um, that the blood vessel is feeling, basically, um, because, these blood because these constituents of the blood are banging into it, that is what is known as hemodynamic shear stress. Hemodynamic shear stress. So basically, the blood vessel is feeling a force in the same direction as the uh, direction in which the blood is flowing. Now, I just want to make something very clear. In this friction example, I was telling you, you know, that the was a force coming this way. So you might ask, well, why on earth don't the endothelial cells feel a, feel a force going in the opposite direction? Think. Was it the table that was feeling a force going that way? No. The frictional force was the force that the weight was feeling backwards. 
okay, as it rubbed against the molecules of the table. When you pull this weight this way, so let's say you've got a piece of string here and you're pulling this weight, then you're rubbing the molecules of the weight against the molecules of the table. The table is feeling a force going this way, basically, in the direction that the weight is moving. Similarly, uh, the endothelial cells feel a force in the direction which the blood is moving, simply because the particles of the blood are hitting them, and they're going in that direction. So, at the end of which way is the endothelial cell going to feel a force? It's going to be in the direction that the molecules are hitting them, basically. So this is what is known as hemodynamic shear stress. Now, I also want to explain to you the units that it's measured in. It's usually measured in a unit known as dyne, uh, often abbreviated to dyn for short, so this is often abbreviated to dyn, per centimetre squared. Okay, so the centimetre squared you've probably heard of before. Dyne is a bit more difficult. So... What does this mean? Well, if I was to take out a piece of this endothelium, okay, I could take out a centimetre squared of it, potentially. And a centimetre squared, I've actually drawn out the size of a centimetre squared. So it's one centimetre by one centimetre. Okay, uh, so this is a centimetre squared, roughly, that I've drawn here. Okay, and let's say this is a centimetre squared of endothelium. Then if this has blood flowing uh, well, parallel to it, so the blood will be flowing like this in the same plane as it, then those blood vessels will all be hitting the molecule, sorry, all the constituents of the blood will all be hitting molecules that make up the endothelial cell here in purple now. And they will feel a force in this direction, basically, parallel to uh, the direction the blood is moving. Now, if you take a centimetre squared of the blood vessel out, then this entire centimetre squared is going to be feeling this sheer stress force, okay? And if you add up all the force that the entire centimetre squared feels, then that's what we mean by the hemodynamic shear stress. So, the reason the units is in dyne per centimetre squared, and I haven't told you what dyne is yet, dyne is just an equivalent, it's another, uh, it's another way of expressing force, another unit for force. It's effectively uh, the same as Newton's, but different. Um, it's just a, I'll tell you exactly what it is. One dyne, one dyne is equal to 10 micronewtons. So it's just a measure of force. So if you've got one newton, one newton of force, hopefully you can figure out how many dynes that would be. That would be 10 thousand dimes, basically. So, it's just a different way of expressing force. Okay, a more physiologically relevant way of expressing force, because you aren't going to have newtons acting on this centimetre, you have dynes. Okay, uh, so that's all the dyne is. So effectively, what you do is you add up all the little forces that are being felt on every point of this one centimetre squared of endothelial cells, uh, i.e. you add up the contribution of every single molecular collision that's happening over this one centimetre squared of endothelium, and that will give you some overall force that is felt by the entire centimetre squared. And uh, that will be in dynes, basically. So that's why hemodynamic she shear stress is measured in dynes per centimetre squared. Because it's telling you how much force is felt on a centimetre squared of endothelium. Okay, so if you wanted to overall know how much shear stress, how much force was felt on, let's say, 10 centimetres squared of endothelium, then what you take is you take the shear stress and you just multiply it by 10, because the shear stress tells you how much force is being exerted uh, parallel to the direction of blood flow on a centimetre squared of endothelium, and to turn that into how much it would be felt on 10 centimetres squared, you just need to multiply the shear stress by 10. Okay, so that's, that's all that... Uh, that units mean. And the general hemodynamic shear stress that an arterial blood vessel would feel would be 15 dynes per centimetre squared. So that means the um, hemodynamic stress that these arterioles might be feeling because blood is flowing through them. 
15 times per centimeter squared, which means, effectively, 150 micronewtons of force are felt on a centimeter squared of endothelium. So if you add up all the little collisions that are happening between constituents of the blood and molecules that make up the endothelial cells, then that overall adds up to 150 micronewtons in the direction of blood flow.